Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're going to do a short video about upgrading a 3D printer. So I own two 3D printers which are behind me. Both of them are made by Lulzbot, but they're built on the open source RepRap project. And that means that the plans for all the parts, all the electronics and all the software are open source. So that makes upgrading really easy. So the printer we're going to do the upgrade on is the Lulzbot AO101, which was the previous model to the Taz, and this one I've had since new. It's been an excellent printer and is still going strong now. So the Taz on the left here, you'll notice has got this cool little LCD display, which you can control all the functions, and you can print from SD card. Um, the AO101 didn't ship with one of those, so that means that, um, controlling it from a laptop with a piece of software called Pronterface, or an equivalent, um, which is getting annoying because my old netbook that I'm using with this is starting to get a bit long in the tooth. So I'm going to add the LCD support. So being open source means that you can pretty much buy RepRap parts from anywhere. There are several distributors and several manufacturers making compatible parts. So I've already got hold of one of the LCD displays. This is from RepRap Discount. I actually got this from a different seller on eBay. And this has got the control knob that you press to operate, the sounder, the button, and the SD card slot. Now it's got two cables attached to it, and it came with a little adapter board. And the board it came with is for a ramps board, which is a piggyback board for, board for Arduino, which is um, what a lot of people have in 3D printers. So, um, in fact, the Lulzbot printers ship with the other standard, which is the Rambo board, which is, in fact, one integrated board with an Arduino on it and the motor controllers. So I had to buy this little adapter board, which was $3 from another seller on eBay. Lulzbot do sell a cable to attach the standard LCD to a Rambo. However, the cable's really long because it's meant for the Taz, which is a bigger printer. So the cables here are perfectly good for the AO101, and we just bought this $3 board, which allows us to attach it. So um, we could just plug it in, but first of all, we actually need to make some changes to the firmware to add LCD support. So the next thing we need to do is get hold of the firmware for the printer so we can make the changes. So um, as I said, these printers are open source and Lulzbots publish all of the firmware on their website. So if we go to the support link and we go to downloads, we can see there that we've got all of the open source software toolchain that we need. And we've also got the firmware there for every uh, Lulzbot printer that's been made. So I had a chat with Lulzbot and their recommendation in fact to make it as simple as possible is to use the TAS2 firmware which is fairly similar to the AO101 but slightly different mechanically but also already has LCD support. So I've downloaded the TAS2 firmware and the AO101 firmware so we can just basically modify the TAS2 firmware for the mechanical changes and then everything should work. So I've downloaded and unpacked the firmware. I used a utility called 7-Zip for this, which is a bit like an unzipping utility, but there are others available. So you should find you have a directory called Marlin with lots of files in it, including the Marlin INO, which is the Arduino project. You'll need Arduino 1.0.5 for this. There are some incompatibilities with later versions. So I've opened my Marlin project. And we can see all the code here, including various tabs. The majority of the changes need to take place on the Configuration H tab. So the main things we need to change here are the thermistor settings, which you can find here. So we need to compare those settings with the AO101 firmware. So I've got my AO101 Configuration H uploaded here into WordPad so that I can view the settings without getting confused between two versions of Arduino. So those are the temp settings for the, where the thermistors are allocated and the type of thermistor for feedback. The other thing which Lulzbot recommended changing was the PID settings for the heater. So the original AO101 heater is using a PID control, which means that as it gets near to its target temperature, it starts to wind back the power so it doesn't overshoot. And as it cools down, it starts to slowly increase the power to keep the temperature constant. Now it appears with the TAS2 is not using that, it's using what's called bang bang control, which is essentially like your house thermostat, where when it reaches its right temperature it turns off, and when it cools down a bit it turns on again. So there's no variable power. So um, we can see in the TAS2 firmware in fact that the PID um, is commented out, so it must be using bang bang. So that should be a simple case of uncommenting these lines to make sure that we're using PID for the AO101. However, I've read quite widely that using bang bang control means that you can heat up your heater a lot quicker. So I'm gonna give that a go. And obviously the good thing about being open source is that you can always come back to experiment. The other section that needs editing is the mechanical settings because the two printers are a different size and have different sized lead screws. 
The main thing we need to change are the end stops. I've already edited the max X, Y, and Z positions for the AO101 dimensions. And the other setting is the steps per millimeter, so you need to copy those settings across from the AO101 firmware. And that's mainly because the lead screws in the AO101 are separate from the TAS. If you're not using a Lulzbot printer, but you're still using Marlin firmware on a RepRap derived printer, then have a look at the RepRap.org wiki where you can find out more information about adding the LCD. This is the page, I'll put the link in the description, but you can see here there's a picture of the riser board and various other things on the back of the LCD. There's also some code changes to the firmware that you need to make. RepRapElectro.com have also released a manual for the Rambo board. This is a PDF and again I'll put the link in the description to this video. There's lots of information about the Rambo in here, um, including adding the LCD so you'll find similar things to the RepRap page, but also some extra code downloads and some extra bits and pieces. So now we just need to plug in the uh, printer with the USB and upload the firmware. So it's time to take the printer to pieces and fit the LCD. So fortunately Lulzbot shipped their printers with the correct screwdrivers and another set of tools for 3D printing and so on. So we just need to remove these four screws. Okay, so let's plug in the LCD. Uh, making sure we get this the right way around. So there's three connectors on this which need to be, um, of course, plugged in in the correct place. So make sure those are perfectly aligned. I think that's it. And there's also one tiny jumper we need to move over which is right next to the uh, USB port. And the reason for that is um, otherwise the display only works when USB is connected and it's getting 5 volts from USB but there's a connector that's to get the power from the power supply instead. Obviously we won't be connecting this with USB anymore so we just need to move that jumper over one notch, it's right next to the USB connector. And now if we power up our printer we should find that the LCD works. There we go, looks good. It says it's a TAS2 but um, Obviously that's because we've used the TAS firmware, so now we should find that all of the functions work. So if I press the select switch and let's just go down and try and move the axes. Pick the X axis. Whoops, I've run off the end there, but yeah, that seems to work. Super, so let's try and do some printing. So we need a nice case for our LCD, so I went on to Thingiverse and looked for the RepRap discount LCD and um, obviously someone's already made a case for it with all the parts you can download. So we'll download that, I'm going to print it in ABS and then I'm going to acetone weld it to one of the existing printer brackets. Okay, so I've temporarily mounted the LCD on here with a bit of foam PVC board so it doesn't short out on the metal frame and it's taped on so it doesn't fall off as the printer wobbles when it prints, but I've put my um, G-code for those parts on the LCD. So we should be able to just scroll down here and do print from LCD. I've already preheated it. So let's uh, set that off and see how it goes. So those parts have printed and I've mounted my LCD in the box and I've also just done an acetone weld onto the existing ABS part which is the equivalent to this side so that I can just screw the display on and it mounts quite nicely on the side there. So here's the display all mounted in its 3D printed box, obviously I can access the SD card in the whoops, slot in the side there and everything else works so um, obviously the knob activates the functions and so on as it should do. So the only small problem I've had is shutting the lid of the electronics box again due to the fact that the little riser board stops the lid fitting properly. So I've just put it on some longer screws there so the fan can still blow air at the electronics. There's actually quite a few alternative ones of these on Thingiverse you can download for bigger fans. So I'd quite like to get um, one of those light up LED fans for um, pimping out computer cases and put one of those in there instead. But for now that'll do so that it can operate. 
So that's the end of that mini project. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my social media pages for some other projects, including my 3D printed scrap metal sculpture inspired alien xenomorph suit, my 3D printed Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future 2, and also lots of Iron Man projects, including a video from Maker Faire, which happened a couple of weeks ago.